The River Yare is a river in the English county of Norfolk. In its lower reaches it is one of the principal navigable waterways of the Broads and connects with the rest of the network. The river rises south of Durham close to the village of Shipdham. From there it flows in a generally eastward direction passing Barnum Broom and is joined by the River Tiffey before reaching Bauberg. It then skirts the southern fringes of the city of Norwich, passing through Colney, Cringilford. Lakenham and Trous. At Whittlingham it is joined by the River Wincham and although the Wincham is the larger and longer of the two, the river downstream of their confluence continues to be called the Yare. Flowing eastward into the Broads it passes the villages of Bramerton, Surlingham, Rockland St. Mary and Cantley. Just before Riedham at Hardley Cross, erected in 1676, it is joined by the River Chet. The cross marks the ancient boundary between the city of Norwich and borough of Great Yarmouth. Beyond Riedham the river passes the famously isolated marshland settlement of Burney Arms before entering the tidal lake of Braden Water. Here the year is joined by the rivers Waveney and Bure and finally enters the North Sea at Galston, Great Yarmouth. The year is the frequent subject of landscape paintings by members of the early 19th century Norwich School of Artists. The National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. contains an oil painting by John Crome entitled Moonlight on the Air. Joseph Stannard depicted the river in Thorpe Water Frolic, Afternoon, 1824, and Boats on the Air near Bramerton, 1828 which is in the Fitzwilliam Museum, Cambridge. The river is navigable to small coastal vessels from Norwich to the sea, and in former times carried significant commercial traffic to that city. At Riedham the river is joined by the Haddiscoe Cut, a canal which provides a direct navigable link to the River Waveney at Haddiscoe avoiding braid and water. Navigation the river provides a navigable link between Norwich and the North Sea, but silting has been a long-standing problem. In 1698, an Act of Parliament was obtained which allowed duty to be collected for any coal traffic using the river. The money raised was to pay for improvements to the course of the river and to the harbour at Great Yarmouth, but the majority of it went towards harbour improvements, and little improvement of the river occurred. Three more acts attempted to rectify the situation, but the river continued to be neglected. A fifth act, obtained in 1772, sought to address the problem in a different way, and specified how the tolls were to be used. Fifteen percent was to be given to Norwich for river improvements between the city and Hardley Cross. 25% was given to Yarmouth for improvements to the lower river between Hardley Cross and the town, with a further 40% set aside for maintenance of Yarmouth Harbour. Other rivers benefited from the remaining 20%. The size of vessels that could reach Norwich was limited by the shallow channel crossing Braid and Water and so all goods arriving from the North Sea had to be transshipped to smaller vessels at Yarmouth. In order to improve the situation the merchants of Norwich asked William Cubitt to look for a solution in 1814. His proposal consisted of dredging a new channel to the south side of Braid and Water and making various improvements to the river. This was costed at £35,000 but the plan was opposed by Yarmouth Corporation when it was made public in 1818. John Ranney, acting for the corporation, concluded that the plan might result in silting of the harbour, and so Cubitt proposed an alternative, which would link the air to Lowestoft. This was also opposed by Yarmouth Corporation, but despite the cost began more than double and assurances from Thomas Delford and James Walker that improved navigation to Norwich would not harm Yarmouth, this was the plan that was laid before Parliament in 1826. 
the act would authorize dredging of the Yare between Norwich and Rietam, from where a 2.5 mile, 4.0 kilometers, canal would be built to connect to the River Waveney at Haddiscoe. Olton Dyke would be enlarged, and a cut in lock built to link Holton Broad to Lake Lothing, and hence the North Sea. At the formal inquiry, six engineers gave evidence for the proposal, but the opposition of Yarmouth and local landowners who feared potential flooding resulted in the bill being narrowly defeated. Similar plans were submitted in the next parliamentary session, with Yarmouth spending £8,000 to ensure its defeat. Evidence for the plan included details of widespread theft during the transshipment process at Yarmouth. A man had hidden in a wicker basket to record the conversations and activities of the thieves, and ultimately 18 men were convicted of taking the goods and one of receiving it. The act was granted on May 28, 1827. The act allowed the Norwich and Lowesthoff Navigation Company to raise £100,000 as capital, with an additional £50,000 if necessary. Work started at the Lowesthoft end, with Alderman Chris Brown of Norwich cutting the first sod in the autumn. The lock and channel between Olton Broad and Lake Clothing were completed by 1829 and the first vessel used Lowestoft Harbour on June 3, 1831. Costs overran, and to complete the Hedisku cut, the additional £50,000 authorised by the Act was raised by taking a loan from the Exchequer Bill Loan Commissioners. The cut was completed in 1832, and the improvements of the remaining 32 miles, 51 kilometres, to Norwich were finished by the autumn of 1833. A grand opening was held on September 30, 1833, when it was planned that the Jarrah would tow two vessels, the city of Norwich and the Squire, which were moored at Lowestoft, to Norwich. Unfortunately, the Jarrah was at Yarmouth, and the corporation refused to open the bridge at the head of Braid and Water to allow the vessel to pass. The captain eventually cut down the funnel, but the delay resulted in him missing the tide, and he had to wait to cross Braid and Water. The convoy reached Norwich the following day, where 10,000 people lined the banks of the river to witness the event. Despite high hopes, the venture was not a success, as operating costs exceeded revenue, and the loan from the Exchequer Bill Loan Commission could not be repaid. The arrival of the railways added an element of competition, and the commissioners took over the Haddiscoe Cut in 1842, selling it on to Sir Samuel Morton Pedo, a railway developer. A new cut was made at Thorpe in 1844, where the railway crossed a loop in the river. The bridges at both ends of the old course restrict headroom to about 6 feet, 1.8 meters. Five. The city of Norwich attempted to buy the navigation in 1848, but were again opposed by Yarmouth, and withdrew their bill from Parliament. Silting of lay clothing became a problem, and traffic gradually reverted to using the route through Yarmouth. A grandiose plan to build a ship canal between Yarmouth and Norwich with a commercial dock at Whittlingham and a naval base at Rockland Broad proposed in 1908, came to nothing, but steam tugs continued to haul barges of coal to Norwich until the 1960s. Commercial traffic has now been replaced by leisure boating. The river is tidal as far as Trous Mills, with a tidal range of 2.5 to 3 feet, 0.76 to 0.91 meters, Adriatum and 1.5 to 2 feet, 0.46 to 0.61 meters, at Norwich. High water at Rietum occurs some 1.5 hours after high water at Yarmouth, and at Norwich it is 4.5 hours after Yarmouth.